Hello and welcome to this second look exploring session and today we are taking another look at the tragical history of Dr Faustus a text. Yes, we're looking at a text, or more importantly, the a text of Dr. Faustus, which we have already looked at once. Uh, we looked at it in an earlier first look exploring session, uh, or sessions. We looked at it uh, over a couple of sessions, uh, where we stopped and started and discussed it and and uh, had a little look at uh, at what Marlowe and uh, others uh, potentially TBA to be discussed um, uh, was was doing. This time we're not going to stop. Uh, we're going to just rattle through it. We're going to uh, try and give it a bit more of a performancey edge. But we're, ultimately, uh, a lot of us haven't had much time to work with the text. So uh, we're not aiming for perfection, but we are aiming for a little bit of the end of the week fun. That's 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 what we're going for here. Fun with that sort of determined, terrified look in one's eyes. Uh, so, um, yes, we're going to be rattling through the whole of Dr. Faustus, uh, the A text. There is a B text, which we haven't looked at even in the, uh, uh, the ex uh, other exploring uh, sense. Uh, that's something that we'll probably come around to, I don't know, probably next Halloween, because uh, we're very near to Halloween. This is about as spooky as we get. So everyone go woo. Ooh. There we are. Um, don't say we don't try. Don't say we don't try. Uh, so uh, the team today reading through, uh, reading the part of Dr. Faustus himself today is... Hi, everyone. My name's Simon, and I am an actor, writer, and director based in Dublin. And uh, reading uh, Mephistopheles, stalwart, stalwart personage, is... Hi, I'm Tamara. I'm an actor. I am still sat in Germany. And, um, yes, I'm Mephistopheles, not to be confused with the cat's character. Absolutely not. Very, very different. Uh, at some point, uh, Tamara will be allowed to stand up in Germany. Uh, uh, reading the chorus and a Wagner and a horse courser today is... Hi, I'm Steve Longstaff, scholar of early modern drama, coming to you from sunny Lancaster in the UK. Uh, today, reading Evil Angel, Gluttony, a Vintner, and Third Scholar is... Hi, I'm Pamela Flanagan. I'm an actor based in London. Uh, reading the First Scholar, Lechery, and a Knight is... Hi, I'm Eric, and this is my fifth. Uh, reading uh, 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 the Clown Robin, a Lucifer, and a Duchess is... Liza Graham, actor, singer, and Renaissance text coach, two actors in London. Uh, reading the second scholar, Roth and uh, 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 Lorraine is... I am Alan Scott, based in Suffolk. Uh, reading a good angel, good angel, covetousness, a friar and emperor is... Alexandra, and feeling wonderfully legitimised by the fact that we have people in actual Germany doing a play about Germany. So, yay! Excellent. Um, uh, uh, get, j joining us last minute uh, 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 to read Envy today is... Hello, I am Lindsay Beecham and I'm an actor and I'm currently in Limerick for God knows how long. Yes, uh, it's, it's nice to introduce you in a session as well after the other day when you were there and I, I forgot totally to actually say who you were or why you were there is just a, a random additional face uh, which uh, I tried to avoid this time I tried to avoid it yeah, this time it was all good I loved it. it it meant I just got to lurk which was very nice we all like a lurk we yes. don't we D deep down don't we all like a lurk uh, reading Cornelius Rafe and Duke today is Sarah Blake also in Germany not surrounded by angels or demons um, and I'm a writer director and actor not surrounded by angels or demons that you know of and uh, reading Valde's uh, pride uh, the Pope and an old man is hello my name is Lynn Freitas I teach writing to college students in the northwestern United States this is Scooter and he's going to be terrorizing my house while we uh, while we do this Yes, uh, come for the plays, stay for the cute animals. Other animals, cute animals, are available and may appear at random moments. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton, and I will be reading Sloth, because I just can't be bothered. Uh, I may also be reading in uh, other additional parts. I will also be vaguely marking the end of scenes with the sound of a... 
lovely bell. But I may also do some additional sound effects as and when they pop up. It's all a bit of random chance as I'll be leech reaching down into my little box of uh, sound effects to see what uh, are appropriate or for that matter deeply inappropriate. Um, but we're going to now jump into the tragical history of Dr. Faustus. If those not speaking could clear the stage as the audience comes in and out comes a chorus. Not marching now in fields of Thrasymene, where Mars did mate the Carthaginians, nor sporting in the dalliance of love in court of kings where state is overturned, nor in the pomp of proud audacious deeds intends our muse to vaunt her heavenly verse. Only this, gentlemen, we must perform the form of Faustus' fortunes, good or bad. To patient judgments we appeal our plaud, and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now is he born, his parents' base of stock in Germany, within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Württemberg he went whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So soon he profits in divinity, the fruitful plot of scholarism graced, that shortly he was graced with doctor's name, excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology. Till, swollen with cunning, of a self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount above his reach. And, melting, heavens conspired his overthrow for falling to a devilish exercise. And glutted now with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon cursed necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers before his chiefest bliss. And this... The man that in his study sits. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess. Having commenced, be a divine in shoe, yet level at the end of every art, and live and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, tis thou hast ravished me, ben desire est finist logices is to dispute well logic's chiefest end affords this art no greater miracle then read no more thou hast attained that end a greater subject fit as faustus wit bid economy farewell and galen come seeing ubi ubi des desinit philosophus ibi incipit medicus be a physician, Faustus, heap up gold, and be eternized for some wondrous cure. Summum bonum medicine sanitas. The end of physic is our body's health. Why, Faustus, hast thou not attained that end? Is not thy common talk found aphorisms? Are not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand desperate maladies been eased? Yet art thou still but Faustus and a man? Couldst thou make man to live eternally, or, being dead, raise them to life again? Then this profession were to be esteemed. Physic, farewell. Where is Justinian? Si una edemque res legator duobus alterem alta valerem re, etc. A pretty case of poultry legacies. Extraordinaire filium non protest pater nisi, etc. Such is the subject of the institute and universal body of the law. This study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash, too servile and illiberal for me. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible, Faustus. View it well. Stipendium peccati mors est. Ha! Stipendium, etc. The reward of sin is death. That's hard. Si peccasse negamos falimur et nulla est in nobis veritas. 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. Why then? But like we must sin and so consequently die. Aye, we must die an everlasting death. What doctrine call you this? Que sera, sera, what will be, shall be. Divinity, adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, scenes, letters, and characters. Aye, these are those that Faustus most desires. Oh, what a world of profit and delight, of power, of honor, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan. All things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds, but his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Here, Faustus, tire thy brains to gain a deity. Wagner! Commend me to my dearest friends, the German Valdez and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, sir. Their conference will be a greater help to me than all my labours. Plod I ne'er so fast. Oh, Faustus, lay that damned book aside and gaze not on it lest it tempt thy soul and heap God's heavy wrath upon thy head. Read, read the scriptures. That is blasphemy. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art, wherein all nature's treasure is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, lord and commander of these elements. How am I glutted with conceit of this? Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please, resolve me of all ambiguities, perform what desperate enterprise I will? I'll have them fly to India for gold, ransack the ocean for orient pearl, and search all corners of the newfound world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates. I'll have them read me strange philosophy and tell the secrets of all foreign kings. I'll have them war all Germany with brass and make swift Rhine circle fair Württemberg. I'll have them fill the public schools with silk wherewith the students shall be bravely clad. I'll levy soldiers with the coin they bring and chase the Prince of Parma from our land and reign sole king of all the provinces. Yea, stranger engines for the brunt of war than was the fiery kneel keel at Antwerp's bridge. I'll make my servile spirits to invent. Come, German Valdes and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your sage conference. Uh, Valdes, sweet Valdes and Cornelius, know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic and concealed arts. Yet your, not your words only, but mine own fantasy that will receive no object for my head but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is basest of the three, unpleasant, harsh, contemptible, and vile. Tis magic, magic that have ravished me. Then, gentle friends, aid me in this attempt. And I that have with concise syllogisms graveled the pastors of the German church and made the flowering pride of Württemberg swarm to my problems as the infernal spirits on sweet Musaeus when he came to hell will be as cunning as Agrippa was whose shadow made all Europe honor him. Faustus, these books, thy wit and our experience shall make all nations to canonize us. As Indian Moors obey their Spanish lords, so shall the subjects of every element be always serviceable to us three. Like lions, they shall guard us when we please. Like Almain rutters with their horses staves or Lapland giants trotting by our, by our sides, sometimes like women or unwedded maids, shadowing more beauty in their every brows than have the white breasts of the queen of love. 
From Venice shall they drag huge argosies, and from America the golden fleece that yearly stuffs old Philip's treasury, if learned Faustus will be resolute. Valdez, as resolute am I in this as thou to live, therefore object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues, well seen in minerals, hath all the principles magic doth require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but to be renowned, and more frequented for this mystery than heretofore the Delphian oracle. The spirits, tell me, they can dry the sea and fetch the treasure of all foreign wrecks, aye, all the wealth that our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, Faustus, what shall we three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Come, show me some demonstrations magical that I may conjure in some lusty grove and have these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise Bacon's and Albertus works, the Hebrew Psalter and the New Testament, and whatsoe'er else is requisite, we will inform thee ere our conference cease. Valdis, first let him know the words of art. And then all other ceremonies learned, Faustus may try his cunning by himself. First I'll instruct thee in the rudiments and then wilt thou be perfecter than I. Then come and dine with me, and after meat we'll canvass every quiddity thereof. For ere I sleep, I'll try what I can do. This night I'll conjure, though I die therefore. I wonder what's become of Faustus that was wont to make our schools ring with sick probo. That shall we know, the sea. Here comes his boy. How now, sirrah? Where's thy master? God in heaven knows. Why, dost thou not know? Well, you, I know, but that follows not. Go to, sirrah. Leave your jesting and tell us where he is. <laughs> that follows not necessary by force of argument, that you, being licentious, should stand upon. Therefore... Acknowledge your error and be attentive. Why? Didst thou not say thou knewest? Hast any witnesses thereof? Yes, sir, I heard you. Ask my fellow if I be a thief. Well, you will not tell us? Yes, sir, I will tell you. Yet... If you were not dunces, you would never ask me such a question, for is it not corpus naturale? And is that not mobile? Then, wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am, of nature, phlegmatic, slow to wrath, prone to lechery, to love, I would say, it were not for you to come within 40 foot of the place of execution, although I do not doubt to see you both hanged at the next sessions. Thus, having triumphed over you, I will set my countenance like a precision and begin to speak thus. Truly, my dear brethren, my master was in the dinner with Valdez and Cornelius. Hmm. As this wine, if it could speak, would inform your worships. And so the Lord bless you, preserve you, and keep you, my dear brethren. My dear brethren. Nay, then, I fear he's fallen into that damned art for which they two are infamous through the world. Were he a stranger and not allied to me, yet should I grieve for him. But come. Let us go and inform the rector, and see if he, by his grave counsel, can reclaim him. Oh, but I fear me nothing can reclaim him. Yet let us try what we can do. Now that the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world into the sky and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath, Faustus 
begin thine incantations, and try if devils will obey thy hest, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name, forward and backward anagrammatized. The abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens, and characters of signs and erring stars by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute and try the uttermost magic can perform. Sint mihi de acarontis propite, valeat numen triplex Jehovah, igne ere aquitane spiritus salve te, orientis princeps Beelzebub infernae ardentis monarca et Demogorgon, propitaimius, vos et apparat et surgiat Mephistophilis, quod temereus, per Jehovam, Gehanam et consecratem aquam quam, nunc sparco signum que crucis quod nunc faccio, et per vota nostra ipse nunc surgat, nobis dicatus Mephistophilisis, I charge thee to return and change thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go and return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. I see there's virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How pliant is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility. Such is the force of magic and my spells. No, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate. Thou canst command great Mephistopheles, quin regis Mephistopheles fratris imagine. Now, Faustus. What wouldst thou have me do? I, I charge thee, wait upon me whilst I live, to do whatever Faustus shall command, be it to make the moon drop from her sphere or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am the servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No, I came here of my own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak! That was the cause, but yet per accidents. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures and his saviour Christ, we fly and hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore, the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the Trinity and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done and holds this principle. There is no chief but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word, damnation, terrifies not him, for he confounds hell and Elysium. His ghost be with the old philosophers. But leaving these vain trifles of men's souls, tell me, what is that Lucifer, thy lord? Arch-regent and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? <laughs> yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it, then, that he is prince of devils? No, oh, by aspiring pride and insolence for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are thou damned? Are, are you damned? In hell? How comes it, then, that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinks thou that I, who saw the face of 
God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven am not tormented with 10,000 hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? Oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands which strike terror to my fainting soul. What, is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou of Faustus manly fortitude and scorn those joys thou never shalt possess. Go bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity, say he surrenders up to him his soul. So he will spare him four and twenty years, letting him live in all voluptuous having thee ever to attend on me, to give me whatsoever I shall ask, to tell me whatsoever I demand, to slay mine enemies and aid my friends, and always be obedient to my will. Go and return to mighty Lucifer and meet me in my study at midnight, and then resolve me of thy master's mind. I will, Faustus. Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him I'll be great emperor of the world and make a bridge through the moving air to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore and make that country continent to Spain and both contributory to my crown. The emperor shall not live but by my leave, nor any potentate of Germany. Now that I have obtained what I desired, I'll live in speculation of this art till Mephistopheles return again. Here, boy, come hither. How, boy, swoons, boy, I hope you've seen many boys with such picket of arts as I have. Uh, boy, quoth her. Tell me, sir. Hast thou any comings in? Aye, and goings out, too, you may see else. Alas, poor slave, see how poverty jesteth in his nakedness. The villain is bare and out of service, and so hungry that I know he'd give his soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. How? My soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though twere blood raw? Not so, good friend. By our lady, I need have it well roasted and good sauce to it if I pay so dear. Well, will thou serve me? I'll make thee go like qui mihi discupulus. How? In verse? No, sirrah, in beaten silk and staves acre. Oh, how, how knaves acre? Oh, I thought that was all the land his father left him. Uh, do you hear? I would be sorry to rob you of your living. Sirrah, I say in staves acre. Oh, oh, Staves Acre. Oh, why then, belike, if I were your man, I should be full of vermin. <laughs> so thou shalt, whether thou beest with me or no. Sirrah, leave your jesting. Bind yourself presently unto me for seven years, or I'll turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and they shall tear thee in pieces. Oh, oh uh, do you hear, sir? You may save that labour. They are too familiar with me already. Zunes, they are as bold with my flesh as if they'd paid for their meat and drink. Oh. Do you hear, sir? Oh, take these gilders. Gridirons? What be they? French crowns. Mass, but for the name of French crowns, a man were as good have as, as many English counters. And what should I do with these? Why now, sir? Thou at an hour's warning, whensoever, or wheresoever, the devil shall fetch thee. Ah, no, 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 here, take your gridirons again. Truly, I'll none of them. Uh, truly, but you shall. Bear witness, I gave them him. Bear witness, I give them you again. Well, I will cause two devils presently to fetch thee away. Balliol and... Belcher! Nay, 
Let your Balliol and your Belcher come here. I'll knock them. They were never so knocked since they were devils. And say I should kill one of them. What would folks say? Do you see yonder tall fellow in the round slop? He has killed the devil. Uh, so I should be called Kill Devil. All the parish over. <laughs> 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 Balliol and Belcher, spirits away. What? Are, are they gone? Vengeance on them. They have vile long nails. There was a he-devil and a she-devil. Uh, I'll tell you how you shall know them. All he-devils has horns, and all she-devils has clefts and cloven feet. Well, Sarah, follow me. Uh... But do you hear, sir, if I should serve you, would you teach me to raise up Banios and Belchios? I will teach thee to turn thyself to anything. To a dog, or a cat, or a mouse, or a rat, or anything. How? A Christian fellow? To a dog, or a cat, or a mouse, or a rat? <laughs> no, no, sir. If you turn me into anything, let it be in the likeness of a little pretty frisking flea that I may be here and there and everywhere and, ooh, I'll tickle the pretty wench's plackets. I'll be among them in faith. Well, Sarah, come. Oh, uh, but, but do, do, you, do you hear? Va Wagner, Wagner. Balliol and Belcher! Yeah! Oh, Lord, I pray, sir, let Balliol and Belcher go sleep. Mm -hmm. Villain, call me Master Wagner and let thy left eye be diametrically fixed Upon my right heel, with ways I vestigious nostere insistere. God forgive me, he speaks Dutch fashion. Well, uh, I'll follow him. I'll serve him. That's flat. Now, Faustus, must thou needs be damned, and canst thou not be saved? What boots it then to think of God or heaven? Away with such vain fancies and despair. Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. Now go not backward. No, Faustus, be resolute. Why waverest thou? Oh, something soundeth in mine ears. Abjure this magic, turn to God again. I and Faustus will turn to God again. To God? He loves thee not. The God thou servest is thine own appetite, wherein is fixed the love of Beelzebub. To him I'll build an altar and a church and offer lukewarm blood of newborn babies. Sweet Faustus, leave that execrable art. Contrition, prayer, repentance, what of them? Oh, they are means to bring thee unto heaven. Rather, illusions, fruits of lunacy, that make men foolish that do trust them most. Sweet Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honour and of wealth. Of wealth? Why, the signory of Emden shall be mine. When Mephistopheles shall stand by me, what god can hurt thee, Faustus? Thou art safe, cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, and bring glad tidings from great Lucifer. It's not midnight. Come, Mephistopheles, veni, veni, Mephistopheles! Now, tell me what says Lucifer, thy lord. That I shall wait on Faustus while he lives, so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus has hath hazarded that for thee. But Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly, and write a deed of gift with thine own blood, for that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it... I will back to hell. Stay, Mephistopheles, and tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. 
Is that the reason why he tempts us thus? Solomon miseris socios habuise doloris. Why have you any pain that torture others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave and wait on thee and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. I, Mephistopheles, I give it thee. Then, Faustus, stab thine arm courageously and bind thy soul that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own and then be thou as great as Lucifer. Lo, Mephistopheles, for love of thee I cut mine arm and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's chief lord and regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from mine arm and let it be propitious for my wish. But Faustus, thou must write it in manner of a deed of gift. Aye, so I will. But, Mephistopheles, my blood congeals, and <laughs> I, I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. What might the staying of my blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not that I may write afresh? Faustus gives to thee his soul! <sighs> Ah, there it stayed. Ah, there it stayed even. Why should thou not? Is not thy soul shine own? Then write again. Faustus gives to thee his soul. Here's fire, Faustus. Set it on. So, now the blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. Oh, what will I not do to obtain his soul? <laughs> Consummatum est. This bill is ended, and Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. But what is this inscription on mine arm? Homo fuge. Whither should I fly? If unto God, he'll throw me down to hell. My, my, my senses are deceived that there's, there's nothing writ. I see it plain. Here in this place is writ. Homo fugit, yet shall not Faustus fly. I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. Speak, Mephistopheles, what means this show? Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind withal, and to show thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? I, Faustus, and do greater things than these. Then there's enough for a thousand souls. Here, Mephistopheles received this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, but yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Then hear me read them. On these conditions following first, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Uh, secondly, that Mephistopheles shall be his servant and at his command. Thirdly, that Mephistopheles shall do for him and bring him whatsoever he desires. Fourthly, that he shall be in his chamber or house invisible. Lastly, that he shall appear to the said John Faustus at all times in what form or shape so ever he please. I, John Faustus of Württemberg, doctor, by these presents, do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister, Mephistopheles. Uh, and furthermore, grant unto them that 24 years being expired, the articles above written in violet, full power to fetch or carry the said John Faustus body and soul, flesh, blood, or goods, into their habitation whatsoever by me, John Faustus. Speak, Faustus, do you deliver this 
as your deed. I take it, and the devil give thee good unt. Now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First will I question with thee about hell. Um, tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but where about? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in oneself place, for where are, we are is hell. And where hell is, there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves, and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that are not heaven. Come, I think hell's a fable. I think so still, till experience change thy mind. Why think'st thou then that Faustus shall be damned? I of necessity, for he is the scroll wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Aye, and body too. But what of that? Think'st thou that Faustus is so fond to imagine that after this life there is any pain? <laughs> Tush, these are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary. For I am damned, and I am now in hell. How? Now in hell? Nay, and, and this be hell. <laughs> I'll willingly be damned here. What? Walking, disputing, etc. But leaving off this... Uh, let me have a wife. The fairest maid in Germany. For I am wanton and lascivious. And cannot live without a wife. How? A wife? I pray thee, Faustus, talk not of a wife. Oh, nay, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come. I'll fetch thee a wife in the devil's name. <laughs> Tell me, Faustus, how dost thou like thy wife? I got her for a hot whore. Faustus, marriage is but a ceremonial toy. If thou lovest me, think no more of it. I'll call thee out the fairest courtesans, and bring them every morning to thy bed. She whom thine eyes shall like, thy heart shall have, be she as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Saba, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Hold, take uh, this book. Peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempest, thunder, and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armor shall appear to thee, ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations that I may raise up spirits when I please. Here they are in this book. Now would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens that I might know their motions and uh, dispositions. Here they are too. Nay, let me have one book more and then I have done wherein I might see all um, plants, herbs, and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. Oh, thou art deceived. I warned thee. Oh, 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 this is admirable. Here I have stolen one of Dr. Faustus' conjuring books. And if faith, I mean to search some circles for my own use. <laughs> now will I make all the maidens in our parish dance at my pleasure, stark naked before me, so that by that means I shall see more than I e'er saw yet. <laughs> oh, Ben! Oh, what, what? Prithee, come away! Huh? There's a gentleman tarries to have his horse and he would have his things rubbed and made clean. 
He keeps such a chafing with my mistress about it, and she has sent me to look thee out. Prithee! Come away! Keep out! Keep out, or else you are blown up! You are dismembered, Rafe! Keep out, for I am about a roaring piece of work. Come! <laughs> oh, what dost thou do with that same book? Thou canst not read! Yes! My master and mistress shall find that I can read. He for his forehead, she for her uh, private study. Uh, she is born to bear with me or else my heart fails. <laughs> Why, Robin? What book is that? What book? Why, the most intolerable book for conjuring that e'er was invented by any brimstone devil. Canst thou conjure with it? I can do all things easily with it. First... I can make thee drunk with Hippocras oh. at any tavern in Europe for nothing. That's one of my conjuring works. Oh, Master Parsons says that's nothing. Uh, true, Rafe, Rafe, and more, Rafe, if thou hast any mind to Nan Spit, oh. our kitchen maid, then turn her and wind her to thine own use as often as thou wilt, and at midnight. Oh. <laughs> Brave Robin, shall I have Nan spit and to mine own use? Uh, uh, on that condition, I'll feed thy devil with horse bread as long as he lives. Of free cost. No more, sweet Rafe. Let's go and make clean our boots, which lie foul upon our hands, and then to our conjuring in the devil's name. When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistopheles, because thou hast deprived me of those joys. Why, Faustus, thinkst thou heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, tis not half so fair as thou or any man that breathes on earth. How proofs thou that? It was made for man, therefore is man more excellent. If it were made for man, Twas made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Faustus, repent, yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit. God cannot pity thee. Who buzzeth in mine ears, I am a spirit? Be I a, a, a devil, yet God may pity me. I, God will pity me, if I repent. Aye. But Faustus never shall repent. My heart's so hardened, I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith or heaven, but fearful echoes thunder in mine ears. Faustus, thou art damned. Then swords and knives, poison guns, halters, and in venom and steel are laid before me to dispatch myself. And long ere this I should have slain myself, had not sweet pleasure conquered deep despair. Have not I made blind Homer sing to me of Alexander's love and Enon's death? And hath not he that built the walls of Thebes with ravishing sound of his melodious harp made music with my Mephistopheles? Why should I die then, or basely despair? I am resolved. Faustus shall ne'er repent. Come, Mephistopheles, let us dispute again and argue of divine astrology. Tell me, are there many heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe, as is the substance of this centric earth? As are the elements, such are the spheres, mutually folded in each other's orb. And um, Faustus, all jointly move upon one axle tree whose termine is termed the world's wide pole nor are the names of saturn mars or jupiter feigned but are erring stars but tell me have they all one motion both situ et tempore all jointly move from east to west in 24 hours upon the poles of the world and differ in their motion upon the poles of the zodiac. Tush, these slender trifles Wagner can decide. 
Hath Mephistopheles no greater skill? Who knows not the double motion of the planets? The first is finished in a natural day, the second thus. As Saturn in 30 years, Jupiter in 12, Mars in four, the Sun, Venus and Mercury in a year, the Moon in 28 days. Touch, these are freshmen's suppositions. But tell me, hath every sphere a dominion or intelligentsia? Aye. How many heavens or spheres are there? Nine. The seven planets, the firmament and the imperial heaven. Well, resolve me in this question. Why have we not conjunctions, oppositions, uh, aspects, eclipses all at one time? But in some years we have more, in some less. Per ino motum respectu totia. Well, I am answered. <laughs> Tell me, <laughs> who made the world? I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? Aye, that is not against our kingdom, but this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think, Faustus, upon God that made the world. Remember this. Aye. Go, accursed spirit, to ugly hell. Tis thou hast damned distrusted Faustus soul. Is not too late. Too late. Never too late if Faustus can repent. If they repent, devils shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Oh, Christ, my saviour, seek to save distressed Faustus' soul! Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There is none but I have interest in the same. Oh, what art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in <laughs> hell. Oh, Faustus, they are come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee thou dost injure us. Thou talkst of Christ contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think of God. Think of the devil. And of his damn too. Nor will I henceforth. Pardon me in this, and Faustus vows never to look to heaven. Never to name God or to pray to him, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and, and, and make my spirit pull his churches down. Do so, and we will highly gratify thee. But Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes. That sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to Adam the first day of his creation. Talk not of paradise nor creation, but mark this show. Talk of the devil and nothing else. Come away. Now, Faustus, examine them of their several names and dispositions. What art thou, the first? I am pride. I disdain to have any parents. I'm like Ovid's flea. I can creep into every corner of a wench. Sometimes, like a periwig, I sit upon her brow. Or like a fan of feathers, I kiss her lips. Indeed I do. What do I not? But fie, what a sentence here. I'll not speak another word except the ground were perfumed and covered with the cloth of Arras. What art thou, the second? I am covetousness, begotten of an old churl in an old leathern bag, and might I have my wish, I would desire that this house and all the people in it were turned to God. 
lock you up in my good chest. Oh, my sweet girl. What are thou, the third? I am wrath. I had neither father nor mother. I leapt out of a lion's mouth when I was scarce half an hour old. And ever since, I have run up and down the world with the case of rapiers, wounding myself when I had nobody to fight with all. I was born in hell, and look to it, for some of you shall be my father. What art thou, the fourth? I am envy begotten of a chimney sweeper and an oyster wife. I cannot read, and therefore wish all books were burnt. I am lean with seeing others eat. Oh, that there would come a famine through all the world, that all might die and I live alone. Then thou shouldst see how fat I would be. But must thou sit and I stand? Come down with a vengeance. Away, envious rascal. What art thou, the fifth? Oh, right, sir. Um, I am gluttony. My parents are all dead. And the devil a penny they have left me, but a bare pension. And that is 30 meals a day and 10 beverages. A small trifle to suffice nature. Oh, I come of a royal parentage. My grandfather was a gammon of bacon. My grandmother a hogshead of claret wine. My godfathers were these. A Peter Pickle herring and Martin Martelmas beef. Oh, but my godmother, she was a jolly gentlewoman and well beloved in every town and city. Her name was Mistress Marjorie Marchbeer. Now, Faustus, thou hast heard all my progeny. Wilt thou bid me to supper? No, I'll see thee hanged. Thou wilt eat up all my victuals. Then the devil choke thee. Choke thyself, glutton. What art thou, the sixth? I am sloth. Oh, I was begotten on a sunny bank where I have laid ever since, and you have done me great injury to bring me thence. Let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery. Oh. I'll speak not another word for a king's ransom. What are you, Mistress Minx, the seventh and last? I, sir, I'm one that loves an inch of raw mutton better than an earl of fried stockfish. And the first letter of my name begins with air. Throw away! To hell! To hell! Now, Faustus, how dost thou like this? Well, this feeds my soul. Tut, Faustus, in hell is all manner of delight. Oh, might I see hell and return again? How happy were I then? Thou shalt, for I will send for thee at midnight. In the meantime, uh, take this book. Uh, and peruse it thoroughly, and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great. Thanks, mighty Lucifer. This will I keep as chary as my life. Farewell, Faustus. Think on the devil. Farewell, great Lucifer. Learned Faustus, to know the secrets of astronomy graven in the book of Jove's high firmament, did mount himself to scale Olympus' top, being seated in a chariot burning bright, drawn by the strength of yoky dragons' necks. He now has gone to prove cosmography, and as I guess will first arrive in Rome to see the Pope and the manner of his court, and take some part of holy Peter's feast, that to this day 
is highly solemnized. Having now, my good Mephistopheles, passed with delight the stately town of Trier, environed round with airy mountain tops, with walls of flint and deep entrenched lakes, not to be won by any conquering prince. From Paris next, coasting the realm of France, we saw the river Main fall into Rhine, whose banks are set with groves of fruitful vines. Then up to Naples, rich Campania, whose buildings fair and gorgeous to the eye, the streets straight forth and paved with finest brick, quarter the town in four equivalents. There saw we learned Marrow's golden tomb, the way he cut an English mile in length through a rock of stone in one night's space, from thence to Venice, Padua, and the rest in which of one uh, in one of which a sumptuous temple stands that threads the stars with her aspiring top. Thus hitherto Bo hath Faustus spent his time. <sighs> but tell me now, what resting place is this? Hast thou, as erst I did command, conducted me within the wars of Rome? Faustus, I have. And because we will not be unprovided, I have taken up his holiness privy chamber for our use. I hope his holiness will bid us welcome. <clears throat> Tis no matter, man, we'll be bold with his good cheer. And now, my Faustus, that thou mayst perceive what Rome containeth to delight thee with, Know that this city stands upon seven hills, that under prop the groundwork of the same, just through the midst runs flowing Tiber stream with winding banks that cut it in two parts, over the which four stately bridges lean that make safe passage to each part of Rome. Upon the bridge called Ponte Angelo, <laughs> erected is a castle passing strong, within whose walls such store of ordnance are, and double cannons framed of carved brass, as match the days within one complete year, besides the gates and high pyramids, which Julius Caesar brought from Africa. Now, by the kingdoms of infernal rule of Styx of Acheron and the fiery lake of ever-burning Phlegetheon, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situation of bright, splendid Rome. Come, therefore, let's away. Nay, 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 Faustus, stay. I know you'd fain see the Pope and take some part of Holy Peter's Feast, where thou shalt see a troop of bald paid friars whose Summum bonum is in belly cheer. Well, I'm content to compass then some sport, and by their folly make us merriment. <laughs> then charm me that I may be invisible to do what I please, unseen of any whilst I stay in Rome. So, Faustus, now do what thou wilt, thou shalt not be discerned. <laughs> My lord of Lorraine, will it please you draw near? Fall to, and the devil choke you when you spare. How now? Who's that which spake? Friars, look about. Here's nobody, if it like your holiness. My lord, here's a dainty dish was sent me from the Bishop of Milan. I thank you, sir. How now? Who's that which snatched the meat from me? Well, no man, look. Um, my lord, uh, this dish was sent to me from the Cardinal of Florence. Oh, you say true. I'll have it. <laughs> what again? My, my lord, I'll drink to your grace. I'll pledge your grace. <laughs> my lord, it may be some ghost. You crept out of purgatory. Come to beg pardon of your holiness. It may be so. Friars, Prepare a dirge to lay the fury of this ghost. Once again, my lord, fall to. What? Are you crossing of yourself? Well, use that trick no more. I would advise you. Well, there's the second time away, the third. I gave you fair warning. Come on, Mephistopheles, what shall we do? Nay, I know not. We shall be cursed with bell, book, and candle. How? Bell, book, and candle. Candle, book, and bell. Forward and backward. 
curse fast as to hell. Anon, you shall hear a hog grunt, a calf bleat, and an ass bay, because it is St. Peter's holiday. Come, oh, brethren, let's about our business with good devotion. <laughs> Cursed be he that stole away his holiness's meat from the table. Maledictat Dominus. Cursed be he that struck his holiness a blow on the face. Maledictat Dominus. Cursed be he that took Friar Sandelo a blow on the face. Maledictat Dominus. Cursed be he that disturbeth a holy dirge. Maledictat Dominus. Cursed be he that took away his holiness Dr. Faustus's book, Eke Signum. Here's a simple purchase for horse keepers. Our horses shall eat no hay as long as this lasts. Uh, Robin, here comes the vintner. Shh, I'll gull him supernaturally. Oh, drawer, uh, I hope all is paid. God be with you. Uh, come, Rafe. Soft, sir, a word with you. I must yet have a goblet paid from you ere you go. I, a goblet, Rafe, I, a goblet, I scorn you, and you are but a... I, a goblet, uh, search me. I mean so, sir, with your favour. How say you now? I must say somewhat to your fellow. You, sir. Oh, me, sir? Me, sir? Oh, oh, oh search your fill. <laughs> oh, oh, now, sir, you may be ashamed to burden honest men with a matter of truth. Sorry. Uh, well, ton of you have this goblet about you. <laughs> you lie, drawer, it is a for me. Uh, Sarah, you, I'll teach you to impeach honest men. Stand by, I'll scour you for a goblet. Stand aside, you at best. I charge you in the name of Beelzebub. Oh, look to the goblet, Rafe. What mean you, Sarah? I'll tell you what I mean. <clears throat> Sanctobulorum periphrasticon. Nay, nay, I'll tickle you, Vintner. Uh, look, look to the goblet, Rafe. Um, Polyphragmos belce borans from manto pasto sticko fosus toastu. Mephistopheles. Oh, nomino domini. Ah, what means ah, there, Robin? Ah, Thou hast no goblet. Ah, Autumn Peccatorum, is thy goblet good vintner? Misericordia pro nobis, what shall I do? Good devil, forgive me now, I'll never rob thy library more. Oh. <laughs> Monarch of hell, under whose black survey great potentates do kneel with awful fear upon whose altars thousand souls do lie how am i vexed with these villains charms from constantinople am i hither come only for pleasure of these damned slaves how from constantinople you have had a great journey uh, will you take sixpence in your purse to pay for your supper uh, and be gone 
Well, villains, for your presumption, I transform thee into an ape. And thee into a dog. And so be gone. How? Into an ape? Uh, th that's brave. I'll have fine sport with the boys. I'll, I'll, I'll get nuts and apples enow. And I must be a dog. Wow! Oh. oh, good boy. If face, thy, thy head shall oh, never oh, be out oh, of the potted oh, pot. Oh, 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 oh. When Faustus had with pleasure taken the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, he stayed his course and so returned home, where such as bear his absence but with grief, I mean his friends and nearest companions, did gratulate his safety with kind words. And in their conference of what befell, touching his journey through the world and air, they put forth questions of astrology, which Faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at his wit. Now is his fame spread forth in every land. Amongst the rest, the emperor is one, Carolus V, at whose palace now Faustus is feasted amongst his noblemen. What he did there, in trial of his art, I leave untold. Your eyes shall see performed. Master Dr. Faustus, I have heard strange report of thy knowledge in the black art, how that none in my empire nor in the whole world can compare with thee for the rare effects of magic. They say thou hast a familiar spirit by whom they can, thou canst accomplish what thou list. Mm. This, therefore, is my request. That thou let me see some proof of thy skill, that mine eye may be witness to confirm what mine ears have heard reported. And here I swear to thee by the honour of my imperial crown, that whatever thou dost, thou shalt be no ways prejudiced or endamaged. In faith, he looks much like a conjurer. My gracious sovereign, though I must confess myself far inferior to the report men have published, and nothing answerable to the honour of your imperial majesty, <laughs> yet, for that love and duty binds me thereunto, I am content to do whatsoever your majesty shall command me. Then, Dr. Faustus, mark what I shall say. As I was sometime solitary set within my closet, Sundry thoughts arose about the humour of mine ancestors, how they had worn, won by prowess such exploits, got such riches, subdued so many kingdoms, as we that do succeed, or they that shall hereafter possess our throne, shall, I fear me, never attain to that degree of high renown and great authority, amongst which kings is Alexander the Great chief spectacle of the world's preeminence, the bright shining of whose glorious act lightens the world with his reflecting beams, as when I hear but motion made of him, it grieves my soul I never saw the man. If, therefore, thou, by cunning of thine art, canst erase this man from hollow vaults below, where lies entombed this famous conqueror, and bring it with him his beauteous paramour, both in their right shapes, gesture, and attire they used to wear during their time of life, thou shalt both satisfy my just desire, and give me cause to praise thee whilst I live. My gracious Lord, I am ready to accomplish your request. So far forth as by art and power of my spirit, I am able to perform. In faith, there's nothing, that's just nothing at all. 
But if it like your grace, it is not in my ability to present before your eyes the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes, which long since are consumed to dust. I marry, Master Doctor. Now there's a sign of grace in you when you will confess the truth. But such spirits as can lively resemble Alexander and his paramour shall appear before your grace in that manner that they both lived in in their most flourishing estate, which I doubt not shall sufficiently content your imperial majesty. Go to, Master Doctor. Let me see them presently. Do you hear, Master Doctor? You bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor. How then, sir? If faith as true as Diana turned me to a stag. No, sir, but when Acteon died, he left the horns for you. Mephistopheles, be gone. Nay, and you go to conjuring, I'll be gone. I'll meet with you anon for interrupting me, sir. Here they are, my gracious lord. Master Doctor, I heard this lady, while she lived, had a wart or mole in her neck. How shall I know whether it be so or no? Your Highness may boldly go and see. Sure, these are no spirits, but the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes. Will it please your highness now to send for the knight that was so pleasant with me here of late? I wonder if you'll call him forth. Huh? Now, now, knight. Why, I had thought thou hadst been a bachelor, but now I see thou hast a wife that not only gives thee three horns, but makes thee wear them. <laughs> you are my hand. Thou damned wretch and execrable dog, bred me in the concave of some <laughs> monstrous rock. How darest thou thus abuse a gentleman? Villain, I say, undo what thou hast done. Oh, not so fast, sir. There's no haste. But, good, are you remembered how you crossed me in my conference with the Emperor? I think I have met with you for it. <laughs> good master, doctor. At my entreaty, release him. He hath done penance sufficient. <laughs> my gracious lord, not so much for the injury he offered me here in your presence as to delight you with some mirth, hath Faustus worthily requited his injurious knight. Which being all I desire, I am content to release him of his horns. And, Sir Knight, hereafter speak well of scholars. Mephistopheles, transform him straight. Now, my good lord, having done my duty, I humbly take my leave. Mm. Farewell. Master Doctor, oh, yet ere you go, expect from me a bounteous reward. Now, Mephistopheles, the restless course that time doth run with calm and silent foot, shortening my days and thread of vital life, calls for the payment of my latest years. Therefore, sweet Mephistopheles, let us make haste to Württemberg. What, will you go on horseback or on foot? Nay, till I'm past this fair and pleasant green, I'll walk on foot. I have been all this day seeking my master Fustian. Ah, oh, mass, see where he is. A good saviour, master doctor. What, horse courser, you are well met. Uh, do you hear, sir? I've brought you forty dollars for your horse. I cannot sell him, so. If the likes of him for fifty, take him. Uh, alas, sir, I have no more. I pray you, speak for me. I pray you, let him have him. 
He is an honest fellow and he has a great charge. Neither wife nor child. Well, come, give me your money. My boy will deliver him to you. But I must tell you one thing more before you have him. Ride him not into the water at any hand. But why, sir, will he not drink of all waters? Oh, yes, he will drink of all waters, but ride him not into the water. Ride him over hedge or ditch or where thou wilt, but not into the water. Well, sir, now am I made man for ever. I'll not leave my horse for forty. If he had but the quality of uh, I'd make a brave living on him. He has a buttock as slick as an eel. Mm. Uh, well, God be with you, sir. Uh, your boy will deliver him me. But hark you, sir, if my horse be sick or ill at ease, I'll bring his water to you. Uh, you'll tell me what he is? <laughs> Away, you villain. What, dost think I am a horse, doctor? What art thou, Faustus? But a man condemned to die. Thy fatal time doth draw to final end. Despair doth drive distrust into my thoughts, confound these passions with a quiet sleep. Tush! Christ did call the thief upon the cross, then rest thee, Faustus, quiet in conceit. Mess Doctor Lopez was never such a doctor. He'd given me a purgation. He's purged me of forty dollars. I shall never see them more. Yet, yeah, like an ass as I was, I would not be ruled by him, for he bade me I should ride him into no water. Now I, thinking my horse had some rare quality that he would not have me know of, I, like a venturous youth, rid him into the deep pond at the town's end. I was no sooner in the middle of the pond, but the horse vanished away. And I sat upon a bottle of hay, never so near drowning in all my life. Well, I'll, I'll seek out my doctor. I'll have my forty dollars again, or I'll make it the dearest horse. Oh, yonder is his snipper snapper. Do you hear? You, hey, pass. Where's your master? Why, sir, what would you? You cannot speak with him. Uh, but I will speak with him. Why, he's fast asleep. Come some other time. Uh -huh. I'll speak with him now, or I'll break his glass windows about his ears. I tell thee, he has not slept his eight nights. And I have not slept these eight weeks. I'll speak with him. See where he is, fast asleep. Aye, oh, this is he. Ahem. For God save you, Master Doctor. Master Doctor. Master Doctor Fustian! Forty dollars! Forty dollars for a bottle of hay? Why, thou seest he hears thee not. <laughs> oh, so ho, 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 ho. No, will you not wait? I'll make you wait ere I go. Ah! Yes, I am undone. What shall I do? Da! Oh, my leg! My leg! Help! Mephistopheles, call the officers! My leg! My leg! Come, villain, to the constable. Oh, sir, let me go. I'll give you forty dollars more. Where be they? Well, I'm not about me. Come to my ostrich. I'll give them you. Be gone quickly. Oh, what? Is he gone? Farewell, he. F Faustus has his leg again, and the horse courser, I, I take it, a bottle of hay for his labour. Well, this trick shall cost him forty dollars more. How now, Wagner? What's the news with thee? Sir, the Duke of Van Holt doth earnestly entreat your company. The Duke of Van Holt, an honourable gentleman to whom I must be no niggard of my cunning. Come, Mephistopheles, let's away to him. 
Believe me, Master Doctor, this merriment hath much pleased me. My gracious lord, I am glad it contents you so well. But it may be, madam, you take no delight in this. I have heard that great belied women do long for some dainties or other. Well, what is it, madam? Tell me, and you shall have it. Thanks, good master doctor. And before I see your courteous intent to pleasure me, I will not hide from you the thing my heart desires. And were it now summer, as it is January and the dead time of the winter, I would desire no better meat than a dish of ripe grapes. Alas, madam, that's nothing. Thing than this, so it would content you. You should have it. Here they be, madam. Will you taste on them? Oh, believe me, Master Doctor, this makes me wonder above the rest that being in the dead time of winter and in the month of January, how you should come by these grapes. If it like your grace, the year is divided into two circles over the whole world. That when it is here winter with us in the contrary circle, it is summer with them as in India, Saba and farther countries in the East. And by means of a swift spirit that I have, I had them brought hither as you see. How do you like them, madam? Be they good? Oh, believe me, Master Doctor, they be the best grapes that e'er I tasted in my life before. I am glad they content you so, madam. Come, madam, let us in, where you must well reward this learned man for the great kindness he hath showed you. Oh, so I will, my lord, and whilst I live, rest beholding for, for this courtesy. Oh, I humbly Thank your grace. Oh, come, Master Doctor, follow us and receive your reward. I think my master means to die shortly, for he hath given to me all his goods. And yet, methinks, if that death were near, he would not banquet and carouse and swill among the students, as even now he doth. Who at supper with such belly cheer as Wagner never beheld in all his life. See, where they come. But like the feast is ended. Master Dr. Faustus, since our conference about fair ladies, which was the beautifulest in all the world, we have determined with ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived. Therefore, Master Doctor, if you will do us that favor as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, whom all the world admires for majesty, we should think ourselves much beholding unto you. Gentlemen, for that I know your friendship is unfeigned, and Faustus' custom is not to deny the just requests of those that wish him well. You shall behold that peerless dame of Greece, no other ways for pomp and majesty than when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardania. Be silent then, for danger is in words. Too simple is my wit to tell her praise, whom all the world admires for majesty. No marvel, though the angry Greeks pursued with ten years' war the rape of such a queen, whose heavenly beauty passeth all compare. Since we have seen the na pride of nature's works and only paragon of excellence, let us depart and for this glorious deed happy and blessed be Faustus evermore. Gentlemen, farewell. The same I wish to you. Ah, Dr. Faustus, that I might prevail to guide thy steps unto the way of life, by which sweet path thou mayst attain the goal that shall conduct thee to celestial rest. Break heart, drop blood, and mingle it with tears, tears falling from repentant heaviness of thy most 
vile and loathsome filthiness, the stench whereof corrupts the inward soul with such flagitious crimes of heinous sin that no commiseration may expel, but mercy, Faustus, of thy Savior sweet, whose blood alone must wash away thy guilt. Where art thou, Faustus? Wretch, what hast thou done? Damned art thou, Faustus, damned, despair, and die. Hell calls for right, and with a roaring voice says, Faustus, come, thine hour has almost come, and Faustus now will come to do thee right. Ah, stay, good Faustus, stay thy desperate steps. I see an angel hovers o'er thy head, and with a vial full of precious grace, offers to pour the same into thy soul. Then call for mercy and avoid despair. Ah, my sweet friend, I feel thy words to comfort my distressed soul. Leave me a while to ponder on my sins. I go, sweet Faustus, but with heavy cheer, fearing the ruin of thy hopeless soul. Accursed Faustus, where is mercy now? I do repent. And yet uh, I do despair. Hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do to shun the snares of death? Thou traitor Faustus, I arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord. Revolt or I'll in piecemeal tear thy flesh. Sweet Mephistopheles, entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption. And with my blood again, I will confirm my former vow I made to Lucifer. Do it then quickly, with unfeigned heart, lest greater danger do attend thy th drift. Torment, sweet friend, that base and crooked age that durst dissuade me from thy Lucifer with greatest torments that our hell affords. His faith is great. I cannot touch his soul, but what I may afflict his body with, I will attempt, which is but little worth. One thing, good servant, let me crave of thee to glut the longing of my heart's desire, that I might have unto my paramour that heavenly Helen, which I saw of late, whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean those thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Faustus, this or what else? Thou shalt desire shall be performed in twinkling of an eye. <sighs> Was this a face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium? Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. <sighs> Her lips suck forth my soul, see where it flies. Come, Helen, come, give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven is in these lips, and all is dross that is not Helen. I will be Paris, and for love of thee, instead of Troy, shall Wurttemberg be sacked. And I will combat with weak Menelaus, and we're Thy colours wear thy colours on my plumed crest. Yea, I will wound Achilles in the heel and then return to Helen for a kiss. O oh, thou art fairer than the evening's air, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars. Brighter art thou than flaming Jupiter when thou, when he appeared to hapless Semele. Th thou more more lovely than the monarch of the sky in wanton Arethusa's azured arms, and none but thou shalt be my paramour. Accursed Faustus, miserable man, that from thy soul excludes the grace of heaven and flies to the throne of this, his tribunal seat, they speak me with his pride, as in the furnace God shall try my faith. My faith, vile hell, shall triumph of ambitious queen. See how the heavens smile at your repulse and laugh your sins. And hell, for hence I fly unto my God.
gentlemen. What ails Faustus? I'm a fellow. But now I die eternally. Come see not, come see not. What means Faustus? We like he is grown into some sickness by being over solitary. If it be so, we'll have physicians to cure him. Tis but, tis but a surfeit, never fear, man. A surfeit of deadly sin that hath damned both body and soul. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Remember, God's mercies are infinite. But Faustus' offence can never be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. Ah, gentlemen, hear me with patience and tremble not at my speeches. Though my heart pants and quivers to remember that I have been a student here these 30 years. Oh, would I had never seen Württemberg, never read book. And what wonders I have done, all Germany can witness, yea, all the world for which Faustus hath lost both Germany and the world, yea, heaven itself, heaven, the seat of God, the throne of the blessed, the kingdom of joy must remain in hell forever, hell, ah, hell forever. Sweet friends, what shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet Faustus, call on God. Oh God, who Faustus hath abjured, on oh, God, whom Faustus hath blasphemed and my God, I would weep, but the devil draws in my tears. Gush forth blood instead of tears. Yea, life and soul. Oh, he stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but see, they hold them. They hold them. Ooh, Ooh, Faustus. Faustus. Lucifer and Mephistopheles, I, I, I gave them my soul. All my cunning. God, God forbid. forbid. God forbade it, indeed, but Faustus has done it. For vain pleasure of twenty-four years has Faustus lost eternal joy and felicity. I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired, the time will come, and he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us this? Uh, tell us of this before that divines might have prayed for thee. Oft have I thought to have done so, but the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God to fetch both body and soul. If I once gave ear to divinity, and now it is too late, gentlemen, away lest you perish with me. Oh, what shall we do to save Faustus? Talk not of me. Save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Tempt not God, sweet friend, but let us into the next room and there pray for him. Uh, pray for me. Pray for me. And what noise soever ye hear, come not unto me, for nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray that God may have mercy upon thee. Gentlemen, farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Farewell. Faustus. Faustus, farewell. farewell. Ah, Faustus. Now hast thou but one bare hour to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven, that time may cease, and midnight never come. Fair nature's eye, rise, rise again, and make perpetual day, or let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural day that Faustus May repent and save his soul. Oh, lente, lente, curate, noctis equi. The stars move still. Time runs. 
The clock will strike. The devil will come, and Faustus must be downed. Oh, I'll leap up until my God. Who pulls me down? See, see, would save my soul half a drop. <laughs> my Christ! Oh, rend not my heart for naming of my Christ. Yea, will I, yet will I call on him. Oh, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? It is gone. And see where God stretcheth out his arm and bends his ireful brows. Mountains and hills, come, come, and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. No, no. Then will I headlong run into the earth, earth gate. Oh, no. It will not harbour me. You stars that reigned at my nativity, whose influence hath allotted death and hell, now draw up Faustus like a groggy, like a foggy mist, into the entrails of yon labouring clouds, that when you vomit forth into the air, my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths, so that my soul may ascend to heaven. <laughs> oh, half the hour is past. Twill be past anon. Oh, God. If thou wilt not have mercy on my soul, yet for Christ's sake, whose blood hath ransomed me, impose some end to my incessant pain. Let Faustus live in hell a thousand years, a hundred thousand, and at last be saved. Oh, no end is limited to damned souls. Why wert thou not a creature wanting soul? Oh. Why is this immortal that thou hast? Oh, Pythagoras, metaphysics, were that true, this soul should fly from me and I but changed unto some brutish beast. All beasts are happy from when they die, their souls are soon dissolved in elements, but mine must live, shall to be plagued in hell. Cursed be the parents that engendered me. No, Faustus, curse thyself. Curse Lucifer that has deprived thee of thy joys of heaven. Oh, it strikes. It strikes. Now, body, turn to air, or Lucifer will bear thee quick to hell. <sighs> oh, God. Changed into little water drops and fall into the ocean, never be found! God, my God. Look not so fierce on me, adders and serpents. Let me breathe a while. Ugly hell, gave not, come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books. Ah, Mephistopheles. Cot is the branch that might have grown full straight. And burned is Apollo's laurel bough that sometimes grew within this learned man. Faustus is gone. Regard his hellish fall, whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things, whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power permits. And everyone come back online. What did we think of the show so far? Rubbish. Right. Uh, <laughs> you see, that that was all. That was all.
copiously rehearsed. N no rehearsed. We just, just. I mean, we've read it before, but you know, we were, we were just uh, winging it. I mean, it was like going, we, you should have seen the chat. You should see the chat as we're going. Oh, no, there's, there's devils. There's friars. We need, we need to. Uh, yeah. Uh, sh shall we sing? That was a good idea. No, it wasn't. It was a terrible idea. It was my fault. We still okay. Things have changed so much from when we're supposed to just like come online and read. Wow. Yeah. It weirdly it got longer. Uh, <laughs> rather than shorter, in a sense. Um, I was actually surprised by the, mm. the overall running time on that because um, you know, in in terms of some of the running times, in terms of word count, uh, that that was quite different. Um, to, as I was expecting, I was expecting us to be done at least 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, not that it was bad, it, it went fine. I was very, very happy with it. it was just, uh, that, that I found the, the pace of how it went. I think uh, kudos to uh, Liza's improvised uh, 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 a demon. Um, um, I wasn't was expecting nice Beelzebub to, 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 to uh, semi get a speaking role there, uh, which in the A text he doesn't have, but, um, but it was nice you handed him something to say. I, I just figured, um, weirdly enough, uh, yeah, I just had the rat skeleton right there, and I and and as I came across the line, this is as my one companion does. prince in hell. I had to have someone to talk about, so I just grabbed the rat. Yeah, um, imp improv horns as well. You know, it's that thing of just, just, just. You know, you've got, you've got, you've got to do something to get it across. Um, should have thought about getting some cardboard cutout legs uh, for the horse course scene, um, but you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe chicken legs. Yeah. So, KFC. Uh, yeah. Um, Kentucky okay, uh, we are very much into extra time, as it were. As I was sort of, as I expected, finished a little earlier. So, um, um, I mean, in a sense, there isn't so much to say about Doctor Faustus because Doctor Faustus has a modern performance history um, that's, that, that that is ex existent and is available to purchase on DVD um, or download. So, you know, in, in that sense, there's there's less of a, a, a necessary question of the room of how does this play function, um, and uh, you know, in a sense, we, we we got a sense of it. Any surprises from the room? Uh, how how are, how are people? Feeling about how it went for them? Uh, any any character notes uh, that they were th uh, surprises? Any surprises that came out? Some exits and entrances for Mephisto are a bit weird. I couldn't quite figure out. Am I on stage? Wait, do I? Am I? Uh, uh, am I not? Uh, uh -huh. um, but it kind of. It, I I quite liked the fact that. Um, Dr. Faust is kind of calls for Mep Mephistopheles and then I pop up and then he's like, be gone. Yeah. Right, like um, there's an awful lot Take of... Take your bloody mind up, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it's same with the, you know, good and evil angels. It was like, a, a, oh, I'll do some, I'll do some sound effects to go with anything magic. Oh, that was a rod for my own back that I quickly quickly backtracked on very quickly um because yeah that's just an absolute nightmare uh deciding what what, what do do they when mephistopheles enters and exits how how often is it actually flashy and how often is it just I'm just gonna walk it's fine um other thoughts on the room alan I think if one did a physical production, the way I would do it is that whenever Faustus is on stage after the original summoning, um, if Mephistopheles is there but facing upstage hmm. um, in a cloak and then about turns when called upon it, as it, an it, omnipresent figure. It, it, it's it's one that really uh, depends on whether Mephistopheles needs to get some materials, whether we're using you know fancy lighting and and things, because there's all sorts of disappearing acts we can do with Mephistopheles. Um, you know, it's that matter of how how many how many resources do we want to throw at him? Um, everyone it seemed to really perk up during the Seven Deadly Sins. I mean, it does seem to be even though it's literally you get about two lines, maybe three or four, um, but it's just everyone just goes, oh yeah, I know what to do here. <laughs> it, it, it's about the only, only ensemble piece in the in the whole show. Hmm. Um, it's basically mostly you know, two hands. Oh, the, the Pope. Fast moving. Mm. Yeah, the the Pope scene as well. 
to a, to a slightly lesser extent. We rarely have more than two or three people on, uh, you know, uh, three, four. Uh, I mean, OK, the Pope scene has a lot of friars, but um, there's only actually, uh, you know, uh, a, a few speaking parts. Um... <laughs> Um, other thoughts from the room? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's thoughts about the peripheral characters really is just that, that sense of how making the comedy work. I thought a lot of the comedy was very clear, actually. Uh, a lot of those gags were coming across very nicely, um, where they're not easy to make clear, let alone make funny. I'm not so worried about making things funny in, uh, the, the comedy material here at the moment. Um, Eric, are you waving? Uh, yeah, I, 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 it was hard to keep a straight face while, like, you know, I could see, like, obviously the mermaid going on and then, uh, like, Alexandra's emperor as well, sort of, like, <laughs> it was just like, yeah, totally, I'm totally pissed off right now at this guy, uh, yeah, um, but, yeah, it was just, it was fun to do. Yes, we were possibly going a little too much towards Bathos with the uh, the mermaid uh, uh, Helen of Troy, um, but Simon Simon kept a straight face for most of that. Uh, Simon, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a taciturn man. Uh, no, I, I I hadn't I hadn't done it for uh, like twenty four years, and I thought I'd remember more uh, than I did, uh, and I'd forgotten pretty much everything um although i was the other way around i was uh, mephisto uh when i did it but um i've forgotten how funny it is in fact and well <laughs> wait yeah, i suppose you have to be when you're dealing with the devil and selling your soul but uh there is an awful lot of scope for comedy more so than uh than, than i recall and i think um because our production uh, <laughs> wasn't potentially the greatest production in the world ever uh and um you you can obviously have a lot and lot and lot a lot of fun with what you do with the appearances of Mephistopheles particularly and then spirits and you know how you transform and of course budget can be can be a big thing of course but budget can also low budget could really uh, help you with a style I think it's something that just it's probably the reason it's done a lot it's it's very accessible it's very easy to make it work I feel and uh, that kind of came out I felt yeah um it's it's one of those things so you you need to find the two good uh leads and then you can uh, the rest of the parts you can you can throw to the the the, the hills for uh, if if you're looking at an amateur show for example or, or uh, uh, you know it's nice because it's got lots of little parts that people can grab hold of and 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 take to their hearts um lynn did i see a hand waving earlier no uh other thoughts from the room uh, uh alexandra yeah, I think um, that's something that can be can very easily be a flaw with this play. The fact that there are lots of small episodic parts, small in the sense of amount of text, um, that appear only once and then are never heard from, or that kind of have two, three appearances and then they're gone. Um, but that's also the fun of it. That's also, as you said, you know, this ability to go, you know, you're playing covetousness you have one line in this entire play and then you're just assorted devils and friars so you make so much you, you have a chance to make so much of it and have so much fun yes um, it's the way when pamela appeared and she's just stuffing her face um and it's just going i i know which part you're playing even though i, I couldn't remember uh lindsay then tomorrow um yes i think and almost the complete polar opposite is also uh in interesting to think about which would be say uh, two actors for the two main parts and then the absolute bare minimum number of cast you could do the rest with I'm thinking maybe three or four and having people literally turn on themselves and change character um, with you know kind of you know very um, very good use of props and hats and cloaks or whatever else would be required i think could also be a lot of fun and to have everyone on stage all the time as a kind of a um you know a, a really deliberate theatrical um uh expression performance mm. yeah i mean we've uh we've done it uh technically uh i've, I've produced it three times now um I, it uh, usually with either three people uh or, or slightly more um, so that that as a component, I mean, the middle section tends to get very truncated, um, uh, but uh, the beginning and the end works incredibly well for that. Uh, Tamara. Well, I just wanted to say, um, yes, the mermaid thing and, and things like that can verge on 
you know, but at the same time, I quite like the idea that um, they're under a spell, and so it's not actually Helen of Troy, but it is a puppet or something like that, and they are acting that it's the most beautiful woman they have ever seen. Um, possibly she even looks different to each one of them. Who knows? Um, but it's just a spell. Mm. It, yes. it really just occurred to me when we did it that way that I was like, you know what? This would, this could totally be how the magic works in this play. Yeah, that the you know people are holding up. This is the most beautiful goblet ever, and it's just a horrible tin mug. Um, and 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 you know, and uh, all of these things are, are actually just completely illusory rather than uh, than actual. Uh, I sort of semi stepped in on uh, Alexandra. I don't know if you were still saying things before we go to Liza. I I was um, going to say something very similar to what Lindsay said, and also to add that um, there's there's lots to play with in what effect you cause um, on the audience, what ideas you give them, by whom you cast as what, and how the doubling is done. Mm. Yes, uh, Liza. Well, uh, I was I, I was sort of still on Helen, um, and you know, as a director, Helen is almost the most fearsome challenge in the play. How, you know, how do you have a person do that, an actual human person, with Marlowe's description? Um, uh, you know, if you don't do what what Tamara suggested, which I think is brilliant. I mean, my thought, uh, one of my thoughts was, let me just demonstrate if I can. Oh, demonstration slide, demonstration. Um, would be to How have- to Make your own Helen of Troy at home. Strongly backlit and have the person appear through a veil that diffuses the light. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, kissing through silk veils is kind of sexy anyways. Yeah, or, or at least moderately less creepy than uh, than as potentially uh, the, the the play itself suggests. Um, very briefly, uh, Stephen, any final thoughts from you? No. Nope. <laughs> Pamela, as, as a performer, any final any final things from you? Uh, nothing really to add except how much I enjoyed it and how much I am going to watch this back so that I can see all the bits <laughs> I missed. <laughs> Uh, Sarah, I don't think, have you said anything in this uh, last bit? Um... Uh, no, I have nothing to add, really. Yeah, it was good fun. Excellent. Uh, anyone who's bursting to say anything, uh, do, do, uh, Lynn. Just, I just want to say that I love this play. I, I have loved this play for a very long time, and I will always love this play. And as weird and goofy as some of it is, the stuff with Robin, <laughs> the stuff with the Pope, that final scene and the language that Marlowe gives Faust as he's down, it's so good. It's so good. I don't think I love anything in early modern drama more than I love the closing lines of this play. And however weird it is before that, just the, the fabulousness of that language wins you back as an audience member to the depth and the seriousness of what's going on. It's the, the end of this play, just in my personal view nothing beats it nothing beats it mm. so uh yes uh we'll be coming back to faustus uh we've got the b text still to do for exploring sessions and we're uh exploring the uh possibility of doing a more shall we a, a better performance i mean could it be better could this be bettered um as a as an online uh video experience um if you want to explore further there uh there are a couple of versions that i know exist there's lots of adaptations that exist i mean this play has been uh uh, ad work, reworked and adapted in so many different fashions. Uh, it's one of uh, it, the, the Globe has done it. You can go to Globe Player and uh, uh, and watch it there. One of the two plays that the, the Globe has uh, put online and put out on DVD. They've only done Doctor Faustus and uh, the Duchess of Malfi. There's literally nothing else that they've released on DVD from the early modern period. I mean, it's very weird. I keep looking. All I can see is Doctor Faustus and and uh, and uh, uh, du uh, Duchess of Malfi. It, I, 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 I'm assuming that's just me. Um, but that's just uh, one of those those strange things. Uh, but you know, I do think they should do a lot more. I think uh, you know every. Everybody should be doing a lot more early modern drama uh, of this kind. Uh, more Marlowe, more more other people. Um, and those who are with us regularly will know the kind of jokes that I'm trying to sort of siphon through here. Uh, as we go, all that remains to thank all the readers, all the wonderful work that they have done. And goodbye. Goodbye.